Uh, since so much of a superior court judge's workload is criminal, how important is it for a judge to have had substantial criminal law experience? And we'll begin this time with Bob Commerce. Well, I sure think it's important and useful to have a criminal experience. And so um, I'm doing a lot to acquire the experience I can. I've um, already started researching on the criminal law and whatnot. Uh, it is important to have um, uh, knowledge of uh, the evidence code. The evidence code, it turns out, is the same for civil and uh, criminal, with some exceptions. Uh, in addition to that, in uh, I can say for myself that as an Army officer for 20 years, I enforced the law. It was military law. It was the federal rules of evidence. But nevertheless, um, I get the concept that, that uh, you need to use the criminal law to prevent violent crime. So, yes, I agree that uh, criminal law is important. A lot of the judges that get appointed by the governor are civil judges. They're put into criminal law and departments, and they work there for, they work under the supervision of another judge. They're tutored, so to speak. Uh, they pick it up, they learn it, and sometimes they decide to specialize in it. So I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think it's very useful. And I think it's especially useful in the first five years. Thank you. Um, Ms. Decker? I don't know that I agree with the um, initial premise that the majority of our cases are in the criminal court system. 20% um, of the cases in our system are family law cases. Um, right now, out of the uh, 80 judges, 10 are sitting in family court. We need 16 judges in family court to properly serve that um, caseload. So, um, if I'm sitting in my chair with 20% of the cases being in family court, I would love to see the judges who come through family court have family law experience. We don't get that very often. We have um, four of our current sitting judges who have a family law background. That's it. So we are used to in family court having to help judges um, learn family law, learn the culture of family court and um, get them up and running as family court judges. I would fully expect um, if I were assigned to a criminal department that I would learn the criminal law, uh, criminal procedure, I'd enhance what I already know, and I would assume that I would learn very quickly the criminal law culture. So uh, nowadays we cannot be um, experts in all areas. Uh, the law is far too complicated for that. So um, I do believe criminal experience is important, but I also believe family law experience is important and civil experience is important, and that we have a diverse bench with people with all kinds of experience. Thank you. Ms. Alojima. I do think it's very important that the judges have criminal law experience. Um, I do believe that the majority of the cases are, are criminal uh, just by the nature of how our courts are set up. And, and I had a question before this started by someone. Um, a judge can be assigned to any court, and the majority, like I said, are going to be the criminal courts, or they're also civil family courts and juvenile. And so I think ideally you have a judge who can handle any of those areas, and given my broad um, background, I'd be able to do that. Within the criminal courts, uh, lots of also don't know this, only about 2% of the cases actually go to trial. And so one of the things that's really important is having a judge with years of experience handling very complicated criminal cases to be able to properly evaluate that case and assist the attorneys in settling that case. Um, and then if the case does go to trial, to have the knowledge to make the proper evidentiary rulings during the trial uh, so that the, the jury can make the right decision. And then finally, to have a, a good basis to evaluate, if, if a jury does come back guilty, to evaluate what the proper sentence is. Because while there are sentencing guidelines, it is up to the judge to decide the sentence in the case. And so having you know over a decade of experience within the criminal courts, you can better evaluate um, whether this is an individual who may need to be removed from society to keep society safe, or someone who really uh, would benefit by having some form of rehabilitation and reintegration back into society. Thank you. Ms. McCracken. I actually had the occasion to study this for the district attorney's office. I was assigned the task of studying uh, how many cases, the ratio of cases, criminal and civil, and in fact, it is, it is correct that uh, the vast majority of cases that are in Santa Clara County are criminal cases. And the purpose that I was studying it for was to figure out ways we could be more efficient and move cases more quickly through the system because you've often heard justice delayed is justice denied. 
Uh, is it essential that you have a criminal law background to be a good judge in criminal? I don't think it's essential. I think that if a judge is committed to learning criminal law, uh, I think that even a judge with a civil background can be a good judge in criminal cases. I can just tell you anecdotally, generally criminal lawyers prefer to practice in front of judges who know criminal law. And what's the reason for that? Well, it's a complicated area of law. There's a lot there, and it's just more work for the lawyers if the judge doesn't know um, uh, certain aspects. Actually, the evidence, uh, the law, rules of evidence are quite different in criminal cases. And so a lot of lawyers feel like, well, now I have to um, educate the judge on this aspect because the judge doesn't have that background. Um, if you have a judge that's willing to learn and work hard, then, then um, that's fine for the attorneys. Um, but it, it's a little bit more work, but is it, is it necessary? No, I wouldn't say that it's, that it's um, essential. It's just helpful in criminal cases. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fisker. In our county, most newly appointed or elected judges start out with criminal calendars. It takes, it's been my experience, it takes generally three to four years for uh, a non-criminal attorney to come up to speed, which means that person needs a lot of help. Uh, so of course it is much better to have someone who has extensive trial experience who can jump right in and take over a calendar and a caseload uh, without having any training or any support from anybody else. Thank you. And Mr. Spielbaum. Could I get that question reread, please? The question was, sorry, since so much of a superior court judge's workload is criminal, how important is it for a judge to have had substantial criminal law experience? <clears throat> well, first of all, I don't, I don't agree with the, uh, the presumption that so much of a judge's workload is criminal because there's a wide variety of cases that come before the superior court. But even if we assume that there is a, a, you know, a large caseload, it's helpful to have criminal law experience. Uh, I think most of the people here at the table have had criminal law experience, but it's helpful, but it's not at all critical. And, you know, you look at, you want to call criminal law complicated? Sure. You want to call family law complicated? It is. You want to call civil law practice? That's very complicated. And Mr. Kelmer is here at practices patent law. I'm willing to say that that's very complicated, too. And so no matter what area of law, although that's federal, I believe it is patent law, but, uh, no matter what area of law you go into, it's, it's going to be complicated, and no one judge can be an expert in all areas. And what is probably more important is, is two things. One, how much of a quick learner will the judge be? How motivated will he be or she be to, to come up to speed on the law? But there's another part of the equation that really has been mentioned, and that is the role of the lawyers in appearing in front of the judge. That is, hopefully you'll have lawyers appearing in front of you who will know what they're doing and know, and know the practice of law. I can just tell you as a lawyer who has appeared, basically, if you want to call it a niche practice, call it that, but foreclosure, homeowner foreclosure defense. There's not a lot of knowledge in that particular area. So when I come up in front of a judge, I know that part of my job is to educate the judge as to the law. That, that goes with, with part of the territory. I would expect that if I get into an area, suppose I get put into family law, I would expect uh, that kind of approach from the lawyers appearing in front of me. Thank you.